Man-made diamonds, synthetic diamonds by the ton, are manufactured today at hundreds of plants around the world. They are used as industrial abrasives hard enough to form the cutting surfaces of oil well drilling bits, for cutting stone, for turning out eyeglasses in less than an hour, and dozens of other applications. To make diamonds in the factory, scientists are working with basic principles of physics and chemistry. Just take everyday graphite, the, the lead in your pencil. When you're writing, you, you're writing with atoms of carbon. But if you take those carbon atoms and squeeze them, heat them up, they turn to diamond, which has totally different properties. Diamonds made with high pressure and heat are true diamonds, purer and harder than cubic zirconium used in jewelry. The secret for making synthetic diamonds with an atomic structure identical to natural diamond was discovered and patented in the 1950s by a team of General Electric researchers. Tracy Hall was one of them. In this press behind me, which U.S. Synthetic has built along the lines of my invention, these hydraulic rams are 2,600 tons. So here you have these things coming in form along the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis on a cube that's about, oh, maybe an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half on each edge. You heat it up to about 1,500 degrees centigrade with 60, 65,000 atmospheres of pressure on it, and within a couple of minutes, it all turns into diamond. The tremendous pressures and heat produced inside these presses are similar to conditions 100 miles beneath the Earth's crust, conditions so extreme that gases turn to solid, and any organic compound could be turned into natural diamond. Oh, high pressure research, it's, it's incredible, it's, it's magical. It's just like alchemy. It's just like taking a, a chunk of peanut butter and turning it into a diamond. I mean, what could be more amazing than that? This is Neil Rosenau reporting. I suddenly saw a dip in the current. You know, we use current and voltage control to heat, to heat. And suddenly there was a drop in the electrical resistance. And I thought, graphite might be turned into diamond. Diamond is an insulator. Maybe that's why my voltage is increasing and my current is dropping. So then when I took the cell out, hit it with a hammer, broke it open, split it out in two, at one end of the sample, on a tantalum end disk, is where I saw flashing crystals, little triangular things, just like I had seen on natural diamonds. They were sm they're small, but I could see them with my naked eye. And I knew in my heart at that instant that diamonds had been made by man. Now, I was so overcome, I had to sit down in a chair, my heart was beating rapidly, and uh, I could hardly contain myself. And so to prove their patent, Bob Wentorf, who was sort of a jokester amongst the group, opened his desk drawer and pulled out a jar of peanut butter, which is his fav favorite snack food. And he took that peanut butter, which he knew had a lot of carbon atoms in it, and he actually turned the peanut butter into diamond by subjecting it to tremendous pressure and temperature in the right chemical environment. Sure enough, the diamonds came out. Now, those diamonds were interesting. They were bright green diamonds. And they're green because peanut butter has a huge amount of nitrogen in it, and the nitrogen entering the diamonds changed the color from what we normally think of as a, as a clear uh, gem into something that had this sort of off greenish tint. But nevertheless, they were diamonds. They were hard. They were strong. And uh, they, had, they had all the right properties. Synthetic diamonds are real diamonds. They're, they're every bit as hard. They have the same physical properties, the same chemical properties, the same abrasive properties and they're just as valuable to industry. More so even because with synthetic diamonds, you can control the size, the shape, the color, all the properties that you need to control 
when you're involved in an industrial process.